Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 231st episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. In today's video, we're going to be discussing jailbreaking the upcoming iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus, the next generation Apple Watch, and more. <laughs> Now this video is brought to you in part by FameBit, where advertisers and content creators like myself come together to promote great products. Use the link below or navigate to famebit.com to start earning and or advertising now, and it only requires a thousand subscribers to sign up. All right, and before we get started and talk about jailbreaking, for those of you interested in winning a brand new iPad Air 2, just be sure to rate this video up and stick around to the end for instructions on how to enter my latest giveaway. And again, congratulations to the winner of my Apple Watch giveaway. I'm in contact with him and I actually sent the Apple Watch out already. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into jailbreaking and talk about that first. But it is going to be a recap for those of you who are frequent viewers of mine. However, it's new information and I haven't mentioned it in an episode of this series yet. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Again, it will be a recap for some of you, but I'm also going to discuss a few new things here and there. So to start off, where's the next jailbreak? Well, unfortunately, there isn't going to be a new jailbreak utility released specifically for iOS 8.3, the current public firmware as of recording this video. Instead, the next jailbreak will likely be saved for iOS 8.4, as I've stated a number of times now throughout my videos. However, it will include retroactive support for iOS 8.3, as well as every firmware that was released since the last jailbreak utility being Taiji was patched by 8.1.3. So of course, that also includes 8.2 and 8.3. And since the last episode for Best Tech and Phone Rumors, Pengu has actually successfully achieved an untethered jailbreak on iOS 8.3. However, they haven't specified any sort of a release time frame. At MOSEC 2015, which is short for the Mobile Security Conference, they demonstrated a jailbreak on iOS 8.3 for attendees. However, things have been kept under wraps, and when that actually happened, a number of blogs and individuals across the web started claiming different release dates. And then Daniel K. Four of Pangu officially came out and dispelled any and all release rumors. And the reason for that is like the jailbreak teams who preceded Pangu, they don't want to give ETAs as that will undoubtedly bring about toxic attitudes from select jailbreakers. Again, to date, no jailbreak team has provided a direct ETA for the release of a new untethered jailbreak utility. However, that being said, PP, who is actually a team that's heavily involved in jailbreaks, they funded a number of them. They're a Chinese-based company behind behind PP Assistant, which is a non-approved app distribution method that's bundled with certain jailbreaks, stated that the next utility could be released in July. And the group actually phrased it as such that they were just stating it was their prediction. However, I wouldn't be surprised if PP has talked directly to Pangu and they're working together on the next utility. So again, we could expect something following the release of iOS 8.4, which we now know to be June 30th which will actually be when Apple Music launches as well. Now, what about moving beyond iOS 8.3 and iOS 8.4 being iOS 9? Last week, Apple officially unveiled the firmware to the world and they released the first beta iteration to developers. So, can we jailbreak an iOS 9? There were some rumors going around recently suggesting that iOS 9 would be, quote, rootless. And while that is the internal name for some security improvements in iOS 9, things are starting to look bright for the future as we already have another team who may actually enter the jailbreak scene and attempt to jailbreak iOS 9. They're dubbed the Keen team. I've actually done two separate videos recently where I mentioned them, one of which went more into depth, but essentially they're a top tier hacking team who has experience in hacking Apple's mobile software. They've won a couple of pwn to own competitions, and according to what they told Forbes, they're planning on jailbreaking iOS 9, or at least they have their sights set on the firmware, and they may actually work in collaboration with Pangu. For some undisclosed reason, though, they stated that they're not going to work or attempt to work with Taiji. But I will keep you guys completely updated as things start to develop on that front. And also, as for the Apple Watch, something interesting might actually come of that as well. Recently, 
recently, several developers as well as hackers have actually been able to get small apps to run on the device that weren't actually coded with WatchKit, which is Apple's SDK or software development kit for the device. And in theory, without some hacking, it should only be able to run WatchKit based apps from third party developers. And it's possible that something may come of this in the future, such as when the iOS 9 jailbreak is released, we might see a counterpart for the Apple Watch. And if that happens, it will be an incredibly exciting time because just like the original iPad, which was Apple's last completely new product, it may bring about additional interest in jailbreaking in general from both users as well as developers, which will spark new life in the community. And it will just be amazing overall because it could increase the speed of development for various jailbreak things, such as the creation of new utilities. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and move on and actually discuss a few rumors that have gone around recently. First of all, with the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. Now, up until now, reports have been relatively sparse, but According to new Intel, the 6S and 6S Plus may be built with Apple's 7000 series aluminum, which is their own custom alloy. According to Apple's website, they've quote, created a new alloy of 7000 series aluminum that's 60% stronger than standard alloys, yet very light. So it's possible that the 6S and 6S Plus will be substantially stronger than the current generation iPhones. And if that were to happen, it's thought that it would be increased in both width and height, though the difference might be not nominal and not noticeable for most users. And we'll actually have a link down below in the more info that goes more into depth on that specific rumor. And it's also thought that the next generation iPhones will also be slightly thicker than the current models because of the implementation of Apple's Force Touch technology, which was first introduced in the latest refresh of the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro that's able to sense how much pressure you're actually putting into your touches. And in this case, clicks. It's also the same tech that's in the new Apple watches. So so far, Apple is rumored to implement some really awesome changes into the next generation iPhones, including massive camera improvements. And now let's talk about the Apple Watch, but not the current generation. Let's talk about the next generation Apple Watch because yes, surprisingly, there are already rumors going around as to what the device will actually feature. So according to the latest report from 9to5Mac, the Apple Watch 2, or the second generation of the device, will sport a FaceTime camera, have additional capabilities when connected over wide Wi-Fi without being paired to the iPhone, though it will still require the device to fully function. And there's also said to be new models from different types of metals. And that's all we really know thus far. Again, though, just like with the reports on the iPhone 6S, these remain rumors. And we won't know anything for certain until Apple officially announces it on stage when they reveal both devices, or actually all three devices, since there will be two different iPhone models to the public. And now next up, as we start to wrap up here before for the giveaways, Apple was reportedly licensing 4K video content from Sony as early as 2013 before they abandoned plans for a full-fledged Apple TV set. From there, it was rumored that the fourth gen Apple TV would include support for 4K. However, latest reports state that Apple isn't going to enter that arena with Apple TV 4, at least not yet. All right, and that concludes the news I wanted to discuss with you guys in this week's episode. Just some things on jailbreaking as well as some of Apple's next generation devices. I, for one, am incredibly excited for the Apple TV 4, and I'm kind of upset that we didn't see it at WWDC. For those of you interested in installing iOS 9 on your devices, though, I actually created a video demonstrating a workaround that utilizes a security flaw in the way that Apple handles developer restores. So be sure to check that out for educational purposes only, of course course. And I also reviewed the firmware as well for those of you interested in iOS 9 and what the firmware actually has to offer. And now let's move on to the giveaways. So as I mentioned toward the beginning of this episode, as well as in the past few videos on my channel, the Apple Watch giveaway has concluded. The winner's already been contacted and I've actually shipped off the device to him. However, I am currently holding an iPad Air 2 giveaway. It's very easy to enter. All you have to do is navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari on your iOS device. Come back here, rate this video up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. And I'm actually working on doing another giveaway that's completely separate from Free Apps Fast. However, Free Apps Fast is crucial to the iPad Air 2 giveaway because we do need funding for that. So I am thinking about doing another Apple Watch giveaway specifically for my channel that will be very easy to enter. Let me know in the comment section if you're interested in that. And of course, just be sure to share this video because that will be a great indicator that you guys want a new Apple Watch giveaway. And finally, 
finally, if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos covering various things like jailbreak and Apple Watch related topics, as well as iOS 9, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.